What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video. When it comes to phones, it's something that just about everyone has, has, and a lot of us have quite a few older phones. Some of us like to keep the older ones around in case we break our new ones or hand them down to relatives and family members. Some of us do have quite the extensive history. So I thought to myself, well, let's go all the way back to my first phone, not only just the same model, but the exact phone I ran as a daily driver for my first phone. Take a look and see what it is all about. So today, we're going to be walking through the history of all my daily driver phones, with the exception of like one, because it is destroyed and in a landfill somewhere, I think. The rest we've got footage of, or actually have in hand. So let's jump over the table behind me and take a look at all the different phones I've ran from about 2008. Okay, so we've jumped over here to the desk with all the phones that I've had or used as daily drivers at some point. Um, and it's been quite a lot. In fact, so much, I needed to make a little bit of a note over here. So if you see my hand going over there, I'm just sort of referring to the computer. So let's jump off and just go through the timeline of different phones from oldest to newest. And then some extra ones that have come along for the ride along the way. So first phone is this guy, the old school Nokia N70. This was back in uh, 2005 when this guy came out, but I only got it in 2000. 2008 uh, when my parents upgraded their phones and I needed at that point to have a phone I don't know why many people say kids need a phone literally the only thing I ever used it for was for playing snake and I think I made a total of about maybe a hundred calls in the two to three years I actually owned the phone because I had no one to call I was like in junior school slash early high school I didn't really need a phone and back then it wasn't like things are today um, with a whole bunch of like instant messaging and all that kind of stuff so literally I didn't do that much with it now because this is such a um, old phone at this point. I do have a video coming down the line where we look into a little bit more, but um, damn, that screen size. If we just take a moment to look at the size of the screen versus, say, something a little bit more modern by today's standards, um, well, I think we get the idea of that screen size. For some reason, even back when I had my first phone, I still had a blue wallpaper, so um, that's a little interesting uh, side note there. But this guy is the Nokia N70. It is old school. I don't even know how you lock the screen or turn off the screen. I don't remember whether this was at a time when you finished doing whatever you're doing on your phone and you just put it in your pocket because it didn't really matter. But uh, one feature I do really love about this phone and still love today on modern phones is always on displays. I don't know if we're gonna wait long enough for this guy to actually turn its screen off because it has a freaking long screen on time and hasn't like used any battery. I've charged this up like a week ago and it's still on full battery. Um, so yeah, it's got one of these like slippy slidey camera things. So you pull that down and the camera app launches. I don't know how much we're gonna see there, but boom, look at that. High quality, probably not even 144p VGA, whatever it is. So you pop that back up. It has a front facing camera. It has blue black lit buttons as my studio light decides to freak out. All in all is a pretty solid phone. And this is back from the time when you drop your phone and the worst thing that happened was like the back cover, this guy falls off and the battery falls out. Literally did not matter. So a um, little disappointing. I can't actually try and use this as a daily driver because here in Australia, we've turned off our like original one and two G bands. I think two G's now turned off where three G's the lowest. So this guy has no signal and no way to get signal. A little bit disappointing, but that was my first phone and still is to today um, a phone that I still really do like. I mean, it's got old things like a loopy thing for a lanyard. It's um, pretty old and uh, is pretty used. Uh, we'll get some close B-roll, maybe we won't, but it is pretty worn down. I do have a video coming, so get excited for that. Uh, moving along, we got to about 2011. This is where there's sort of a gap uh, in my phone history, where I don't actually have it here today. But I had a knockoff of an iPhone 4, mainly because the iPhone 4 had just come out. 
or similar, I think it was around 2011, um, and I really wanted one, as most people did, but just didn't have the cash for it, so a, uh, I think it was a $150 clone knockoff with a um, capacitive screen, uh, sorry, non-capacitive screen, so it wasn't like your modern phone where it's got like a piece of glass, it actually had a, a membrane layer that you had to like push on and it was really, really bad, it's like an old GPS kind of screen. Um, so I ran that for a little bit, uh, being a not so great dodgy clone back in like, you know, 2011 when clone phones really had zero R&D into them, it went downhill really, really fast, and that was about probably to the tune of about six months of running that phone, um, which was, I guess, okay, um, and that's sort of it for that clone phone. Unfortunately, again, I don't have it here today. Sort of to the end of 2011 slash early 2012, I actually ran these two particular phones, which have actually shown up in a number of uh, CP model videos right here. So this guy right here is a knockoff of a Samsung Galaxy uh, Note 2, I want to say. The only thing that's different about this is um, it was DIY. So it was sold as a kit. Uh, you put the frame together, you bought the PCB you wanted. It was like a full DIY thing. I don't know why the seller sold it as a DIY kind of thing. It doesn't work anymore because somehow some piece of the logic board is fried. I would like to really replace it, but um, as much as these things are like DIY kind of stuff, I can't find a replacement and conveniently, there's no battery in it either. So uh, this guy's was pretty interesting for its time. It was dual SIM, it has um, SD expansion. The camera was craptastic. I've got a video of it. I'll try and link it there. It's a crap video, don't watch it. Um, but hey, that's what I ran. And at the same time, I had a relative who surprisingly enough went overseas and took this Samsung Galaxy S4 with them on a holiday um, and the battery expanded on the aeroplane causing the screen to crack um, so they went ahead and upgraded themselves to a Nexus 5 at the end of it but um, handed me down this phone which I kind of used it was a little bit later on in the time but I still use this sort of at the same time as a couple other phones I was switching between them because a clone phone with no battery life isn't so great. Now, whilst I sort of considered that to be this sort of part of my phone history, it should be more kind of up there. It wasn't really in that chronological order. Moving along though, was um, around that late 2012 time, which is when I finally got an iPhone 4. I'd been wanting one of these forever. It was um, really, really cool to actually get one. This was a, um, I think it was a refurb model, to be honest with you. I don't actually remember how or where I got it. I just remember I was super stoked to get one. And um, at the time, it was the phone to have. And I'm um, just looking at it by today's standards. It is really, really small. I remember when this guy came out, I thought it was pretty big. Although, that being said, I was coming from a phone that was already that size. So, it wasn't like I was um, sort of uh, expecting anything that much bigger. But compared to the more monsters we have here today, this guy was still considered to be relatively big in my opinion. I'm sure there's other people that have different opinions out there, but I did run that for about a year or so to late 2013, which is when I finally got on the Android side with the Google Nexus 5 with the actual original case that I've still got here. And if it, um, here we go. Account action required for my email addresses. Of course it is, but this phone is still working. And you may remember me making uh, some YouTube videos about this particular phone when it was dead and I was really devastated about it. Now, it was only recently did anyone on the internet uh, work out that these phones were dying because dust was actually getting underneath the power button, causing it to short out and um, constantly fire the power button. And the way to fix it was to hit it with a ton of compressed air. And at the time, people were just unsoldering power buttons and resoldering a new ones, uh, it turns out you can just hit it with an absolute ton of compressed air. We're talking like, you know, an entire can of compressed air to get every single bit out and it works absolutely fine. So, um, I basically ran this for about a little bit over a year from memory or around that year marker. I absolutely loved every day with this phone. I thought it was the best phone ever and I was super devastated when I lost it. Now, at this point, I was in a really bad kind of devastated stage with phones because when this one died, I didn't have a ton of cash. I just dropped a fair amount of money on it. Sure, the Nexus 5 wasn't the most expensive phone, but at the same time, for a high school student, it's still pretty expensive. And at the time, I didn't work a full-time job. I didn't have a ton of money lying around, so I just dropped a whole bunch on this Nexus 5, and it was dead and out of warranty. So replacing it was actually the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. Again, another phone I don't have here, but do have some B-roll shots of from a previous video we've gone ahead and done with it. Um, and that guy ran for a little while, but I got absolutely fed up with the terrible battery life uh, of that particular phone. I mean, sure, it got the job done, 
it was okay, but it wasn't that great. So I upgraded to this guy, the Asus Zen Phone 2. Now I actually ordered this guy the day the Linus Tech Tips video came out about it um, because I was looking into it and you know, it seemed pretty good. And then the LTT video dropped and um, it looked pretty, pretty good. So I picked one up. This is the uh, four gigabyte model. This is the top spec imported from Taiwan. It has the Intel uh, processor, one of the rare things about it, Intel processor in a phone, they don't really do that anymore. And yes, the back comes off somehow, we've got to get it off, um, which uh, reveals that the back does come off and Asus was meant to release a ton of backs, which they never did. And I was super upset. I was going to get like a cool, like wood grain one. I was really looking forward to that. Never actually got it. And um, I have to say, even to this day, I really do still like the Asus Zenfone 2. Sure, the power button in the top position is a real annoyance with this particular unit. It's not my favorite position for a power button, but um, I have to say it's a really solid phone. Yeah, it's kind of under spec by today's standards. The cameras aren't so good, but I really like the power, uh, the volume rocker on the back. I thought that was a cool little nifty thing. It kept it nice and sleek and your finger always fell on that volume rocker. Really, really cool to see there. Um, and I ran that for quite some time, but that is when I started to get into the HTC phase, which is why we've got some HTC phones over here. Um, for a long time back when I was looking at these phones, I wanted so desperately a 1M7. Um, Everyone I knew had one. It was an absolute awesome phone. It was, um, I just absolutely wanted one. I finally do got one now, but, um, back when I was sort of running the iPhone 4 and Nexus 5, I would have given an arm and a leg to have a, um, 1M7. Unfortunately, I never got one until recently, so I never really daily drove with it. So after the, uh, Zenfone 2, I actually have another phone that's not here, actually two phones that's not actually here, and that is the Nexus 6P and the Huawei P9. So the Nexus 6P came at a time when I discovered I could actually, um, be accepted on a phone contract. I had, uh, some money and uh, apparently the phone store let me jump on a contract. So I went ahead and got these. Uh, Google Nexus 6P, another phone I absolutely loved, and is a phone, you're probably going to hear this me saying this over and over and over in this video, but is a phone, if I still had it, would probably still be running today, or maybe I would have just replaced it. It's a really great phone, I, I originally got it because I liked the idea of a Nexus phone, as soon as I got it, I just wanted to run it out of contract and run it forever, really, really nice phone, um, but unfortunately it died, so they replaced it with a Huawei P9, which actually has been uh, handed down to um, a relative of mine, so they can use that phone, it was a lot better than what they were running at the time, and I didn't really need it, nor did I really like it. I've done a number of videos on those two phones, um, a couple of them might have popped up there if I've still got enough cards left, uh, but those two phones were here, Nexus 6P and uh, Huawei P9. Moving on from that, so that is when I picked up the HTC U Ultra, a phone that the internet sort of kind of hates and I can see why, but I still absolutely love this phone. It's got the little second screen up the top of this guy, so if we open it up, open it up, we can see we can like scroll through bits and pieces, uh, we've got little shortcuts. I do still like the idea of having a second screen, it's not really the most actual necessary thing um, at all in a phone. Um, it's big for the sake of being big. It doesn't have a battery that's big enough to run the whole thing. And I do agree with those who are saying it was a bit of a flop, but I still love this phone. That's when I really started getting a HTC. It's got a beautiful glass back on this guy, if we can get it out of the case. Um, I did run a skin on it for a very long time, but man, I absolutely love this, um, the back of this guy. Everything about it I do like, except for the fact it has a smaller battery. Honestly, if this guy had a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, 100% I would still be using this phone as a daily driver today, because I don't see anything wrong with it. It's got good cameras, good everything, still really enjoy it. So then after we got the HTC phone, I jumped on another contract. My contract with the um, ne uh, Nexus 6P had ended, even though I didn't have the Nexus 6P, and along came the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, which for all intents and purposes, is a really nice piece of kit. Even though it's a couple gens old at this point, we've got the P20, I think, now at the time of recording. Um, the cameras on this guy are absolutely boss. Yes, there is the concern with Huawei and what they're doing with data and the Chinese government and stuff, but if we ignore all that, the hardware you have in your hand is absolutely on point. I can't say anything bad about it. Um, everything about it is quick and sharp and on point. I love the camera setup on this guy for taking photos. Videos, not so much, um, but is a phone I really do like. 
but unfortunately I did replace it, or fortunately for me, with the one that I do run every day, which is the HTC U11 Plus. Now, you may be thinking, why did you replace a perfectly good Huawei phone with a HTC phone? And it kind of comes down to working and work and job and stuff like that. Because here in Australia, uh, the AFP and FBI and whatever the other government agencies are, have basically said, don't use Huawei gear. It kind of looks really bad if I'm using a Huawei phone standing in a networking area and it's really not that great looking. So don't get me wrong, I, I don't think Huawei is really going to be doing anything bad and it's more towards their networking infrastructure and corporate kind of gear. But but when you're in a uh, position of recommending hardware or at least working on some pretty high-end and expensive hardware at the time, um, I just had to get off a Huawei phone because there I would be standing with a client saying, oh yeah, don't buy Huawei gear for your company with a Huawei phone in my hand. So um, I still really like that phone. I use it occasionally for whatever clock basis. I use it really as a digital clock on my nightstand, but um, I basically have that guy around, uh, but I do use this guy, the HTC U11 Plus, on a daily basis. This is my daily driver. Um, that being said, I have switched jobs since uh, changing over to this phone, so I probably could go back to it because I'm not really in that similar position anymore, but... I'm on this phone, I absolutely love it. I've done a number of videos about this guy. I don't think I've done a review and I don't think I'm planning on doing a review anytime soon because it is a last gen phone at that. Uh, the U12 is here and 2019 is bringing the U13. So I don't really see much of a point of actually doing a video on this guy. Um, yeah, I mean, this started life as a translucent model, so it's got the black rails versus the uh, green tinted rails. It's got the black uh, accents on this guy again versus the green tinted one because the black model comes with sort of this weird blacky tinty green color whereas this is more of a tinted blue um, really nice dark rails if you're going to be buying a u11 plus buy the translucent one if you don't like the translucent switch the back out for the black because it looks so much better it's a little beat up um, but all in all probably one of my favorite phones and even though it is an older phone at this point i see no real reason to replace it until the U13 comes out and I can get a U12 on the cheap because I don't like paying full price for this phone. Out of all these phones, this guy's the only one that's actually been from a contract. All of these I've been stupid enough to buy outright, um, which some of these aren't exactly that expensive, but you know, iPhones and stuff can get quite expensive. Rounding out the phones that I have and use, um, there are a couple collector phones that I have picked up, mainly from HTC being the One M9 Plus, which is the last ever HTC One phone ever made. I don't count the 10 as a One series because it was called the 10 and not a One series of phone. And this is a One M7 that again, I mentioned earlier in the video, I desperately wanted so bad, but never could own. Unfortunately, I don't really use these as daily drivers because of the fact there is so much better modern stuff it just doesn't make sense going back to something this old. Don't get me wrong, if say this phone, this phone, this phone died, then sure, I'd have no problem jumping back to 1M7, but there's some other better phones out there on the market. And out, I guess, oh, there we go. Uh, you can see the always on screen, which is pretty cool. Either way, that is my phone history. So um, yeah, kind of a bit of a long one, but uh, definitely my phone history and uh, the phones that I did run. So there we go. Those are the phones that I have run on a day-to-day -day basis or a couple extra ones like the HTC ones that I desperately wanted, but never got at the time. But now I had some extra cash and did go ahead and pick them up. If you want to go ahead and grab one, I'll leave them linked down in that description box, or at least I'll leave the modern ones linked down below. Some of them uh, may not be able to be picked up anymore, but it definitely has a fair bit of history and I definitely Definitely know when I was prepping this video, uh, when I was plugging some of them into charge, just hearing those charging sounds again brought back a ton of mes uh, memories, especially that Nokia charging tone. Man, when I heard that guy, I was like, wow, that brings back a lot of memories. But guys, let me know down in that comment sections, what phones did you run from your first phone to your latest one? I know being sort of a younger kind of person, I didn't have some of the more iconic and classic phones, but um, thumbs up to you who had some pretty iconic phones. Do let me know what they are down in the comment section. Guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.